Hey everybody, this episode of Breakdown will be for a fairly big song in our career, Backcountry. And the song that changed it all. Changed everything for us. We became much bigger assholes after this song. The, uh, <laughs> you know, I remember City of Evil at the time was, it was obviously a big jump stylistically. And I remember it, it sold okay the first week, then it just started going down, 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 down. <laughs> and we had a lot of people that were upset about the, the sound change. And, you know, at the time it was like a few months in and we were like, maybe we people made, don't get it. Maybe we made a mistake. Maybe we made a mistake, yeah. And then our friends in Good Charlotte, uh, Benji and Joel and Billy and Paul, they took us on TRL and we played Backcountry, this song. And between this song and the music video, it was the, the thing that kind of catapulted us to the mainstream. And every person that was listening to Britney Spears and the Backstreet Boys was now. They, they were subjected to this they song were subjected as well. To backcountry. So, <laughs> Let's get into this song. It still kind of blows me away that, that a song like this could even take off like that. When yeah. you really look at it, it's like, there's a lot of stuff going on. So let's get into this beginning here. I don't, I don't even know what we're doing there, to be honest. Like, let's, let's, let's break this up here. He who makes a beast out of himself gets rid of the pain of being a man. <laughs> it's weird to hear that one without what the low the one. Fuck? Yeah. <laughs> How is that? What is that effect even? Like, where did that? It's like through a CB from? radio thing. Yeah. I want to hear that again. Yeah. He who makes a beast out of himself gets rid of the pain of being a man. <laughs> what the fuck? It's like your best pro wrestling voice. Yeah, dude, totally. <laughs> I think this whole record is my best pro wrestling voice. Yeah. I mean, that's got to be like... Megatron, dude. That's like the what we did at the end of Week in the Fallen, which is like the slowed down tape. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm sure it's a Pro Tools thing that Mudrock had. But, um, it did the same effect, yeah. Yeah. So, let's see what else... I mean, this is funny. It's rid of the pain of being a man. I wasn't like, sure if that was just going to take off even for that. Yeah, I mean, that's like an example of like pure vocal fry, like screaming, but kind of singing it out. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck's going on there. You had to have done that like towards the end of the album or something. I, 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 just, I, I don't, don't remember. I don't right. remember either. But um, so yeah, the beginning of the song, we're just kind of in there, um, this guitar line, which I remember when I written it in my room and I brought it down to Brian and I was like, no, I think it. No, it was so it's supposed to be like, and then he added on the he had to put on the wiggly. He's that kind of guy. Um, <laughs> but then the verse ended up being, which is more metallic sound. I remember actually Jimmy brought me the demo after you guys worked on it the other day when me and Jimmy were living together at my mom's place and he was showing it to me. I was like, what is this? Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> it was the most simplistic thing. We were just coming off of the Wake in the Fallen and everything, and I think. The first song on this uh, album was uh, way more intricate. The what's the name of it? Uh, Peace and Harlot. Uh, no, the second song on the on the, on the album. Why am I drawing a blank? Burn it down. Burn it down. Burn it down had that. Oh, well, burn it down was the first song we wrote for the record. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So the first song that was wrote for the record was that one. It has everything going on. Yeah. And then this simplistic verse riff came in. I was like, I don't even know what to think about this. <laughs> and then just the ah yeah 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 yeah. So, all right, dude. Now we're gonna get past the very beginning of this song. <laughs> it's kind of got a punk feel to it. It's got. It just kind of takes off. And Jimmy just kills it on this song. Yeah, it really pushes the energy with that with with those fills. Yep. China. Yep. Oh my god. So yeah, I don't know what we were thinking at this point. It's like, um... It was an attempt of somewhat of like an old GNR throwback in, in a way to double them like that. Yeah, but I mean just in terms of like... It's just so unorthodox. The, the riff and it kind of molds or evolves into like to get into the chorus the, the you know the, the riff evolves like which mm -hmm. is just interesting to me it's like a weird way of thinking at the time yeah and i just kind of wonder what we were thinking but <laughs> it works somehow the 
heat so great and weather the barren empty sight. No oasis here to say. The sand is singing deathless Very cheeky. words to me. Now I'm right out of the, the duo or the kind of harmony on that in the studio. There's two vocals. Yeah. It's weird. I don't know what we're doing that. Right. It's kind of a mud rock thing. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we haven't done that, that since. From, yeah. Putting that two double, vocals. Doubling them up yeah. just to thicken the sound, I guess. There was like a, a really tucked, there's like a tucked vocal, and then there's like the main, so. Yeah. Is there's I, 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 one. So weird. <laughs> Jeez. Can't you help me as I'm starting to burn? It sounds like, when you listen back, it sounds like you were having more fun than you actually were when you were I was not having fun. <laughs> I was not having fun. <laughs> I remember that. I think Jimmy's like dance beat in the chorus is it what kind of makes it. Makes it. Dance. Yeah, puts a little boogie in it. Let's get into this real quick. This um, post chorus, whatever you call it, yeah, post -chorus. I mean, it's, it's also it's... unorthodox for a song like this, but I think that's what keeps people's attention because it's kind of jets you around all these different it. things. Yeah, so let's see here. Yeah, you can't call it a bridge, really. It's funny, you just hear the drums and bass like that. It doesn't sound like that peaceful of a, of a part. Until the guitars come in there. Acoustic guitar. Yeah. It sounds Spanish. <laughs> it really does. Yeah. Think... It's almost sad. Very somber. I almost like hearing it like this better. That sounds like an like an intro we would do now. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hear these vocals. Let's see what we got. This was supposed to sound drugged out, and we kind of accomplished that, I think. Yeah, you'd probably talk about the influence of uh, Hunter S. Thompson, Fear and Loathing, before totally. even the, even the music video. Yeah, it's got like balls. So it's got like a liquid sound to it. That's right, liquid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 